YouTube, Push. what's good? See you later, gaming here. Welcome to the Game Lounge Podcast. Uh, welcome to 2016. This is our first episode Ooh. after a long hiatus. Yay. Thank and Braden for not showing up. I'm here every day. They never show up. So uh, if we can get them now, can I get an opening statement from Braden? Hello. It's me. Okay. Welcome back, Braden. And next, Jordy. Hello, is it me you're looking for? Yes, oh. yes it is. Oh my god. <laughs> we are we're off back. to an excellent we're, start. We're back, baby. Alright, <laughs> so make sure you subscribe to the Game Lounge channel on SoundCloud as we post everything there first at soundcloud.com slash Game Lounge Podcast, or you can listen to it on YouTube, whatever you prefer. Appropriate links can be found in the description box below. So let's get started. Major game releases for the month of January include Assassin's Creed Chronicle India, The Banner Saga for Xbox One and PS4, Plants vs. Zombies 2, Garden Warfare... Ah, oh, Plants vs. Zombies, Garden Warfare 2, Open Beta, Darkest Dungeon, Resident Evil yeah. Origins Collection, Homeworld, Deserts of Karak, uh, Mario and Luigi Paper Jam, uh, Lego Marvel's Avengers, uh, The Witness, Rise of Tomb Raider for PC, this war of mine for PS4 and Xbox One. So let's get started off in news. Since we haven't done the podcast in a while, there has been a fair bit of news, including Twitch going full HTML, <laughs> adding thumbnails, adding playlists. What do you guys think about this in terms of streaming? I, I originally thought they always had like playlists. Like yeah. I, used to, I used to go back and just go watch some streams that I missed and whatnot. Like there was always like the past videos and everything. Yeah, but yeah. Like, I, th I think they could only have up to like 10 or something, Braden. Like, they had them as VODs in the little squares down the bottom, but I think they could only have so many, though. No, they were, they were fine with like, I think it was fine with like as many uploads as you wanted, but now you can like group them. Oh. Okay. So like, say, someone so, does yeah, a podcast. Sure, like, a like a streamer's doing, so he's playing like, um... Uh, Legend of Zelda, and then for like two days, and all of a sudden one day he plays League, and then he can group them together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. So and full HTML as well. So no, what was it running off before? Was it Flash? Yeah, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, so Flash is dead. So that makes sense. HTML5, the future. Um, I think that's about it for Twitch. Like, I mean, it's good news for streamers. Uh, yeah. Alright, Half-Life 3. So the Valve writer says that if made, Half-Life 3 will not be a VR game. And yeah, and um, today on PC Gamer, they also got news that um, Mark Laidlaw responded to an email sent by one of the guys at PC Gamer, and uh, he is officially retired from the company, and he said it's, it's due to his old age and like he wants to do more stuff in his personal life and they asked him if he'd be able to talk about Half-Life but of course he can't because he says it would just be speculation at this point because he doesn't even know where it could go if it's still like, even going to be a thing probably not and he probably won't ever return and thanks Soldier for writing both well actually he wrote all the Half-Life games as the sole writer for all of them so so, so, what, so what I got out, th out of all that was Half-Life 3 confirmed? Yep, absolutely. Yep. Pretty much. Okay. Well, I mean, if he can't you can't talk about it... He can't talk about it because he wasn't that, writing it. That <laughs> pretty much confirms it. Because it'd be uh. speculation. But, yeah. Anyway. Yep, thanks, thanks, dude. Well done. For, this, for the sweet games. Uh, next up is Oculus Rift. So, some decent games coming to it, including Vanishing of Ethan Carter, Edge of Nowhere. Edge of Nowhere looks really cool, and it's being made by the people who originally made Spyro... Uh, Insomniac Games, that looks really good. Mm -hmm. But it's third person, uh, which I was really... Well, yeah. it's so, so is the starter game for um, Oculus that comes with it. It's also a third person action platform. Uh, yeah. I feel like anything that isn't like POV would look extremely weird with Appa yeah. Appa Apparently it's fine. That would, freak, that would freak me the fuck out. I mean, apparently it's fine. It's, it. it's, it's apparently like, pretend you're playing like Crash Bandicoot, although you can actually just look around. Like it, it oh. pretends it pretends if it's it's a camera above them and then no. slides behind them. So if you want to see something, you simply turn your head but your character will stay still. It it seems kinda of weird though. Uh, yeah, Kim, that that sounds and like makes me feel like weird. Like yeah, I then agree. so and then you can't see in front, you can't say if you turn it all, all the way around, you won't even see your character anymore and then you can be like, uh yep. Is he dead? Yeah. <laughs> 
At least I think that's how it works. I don't know. I've only watched the but, very because one of them years. is gang beasts as well, and like Braden and I have played oh, gang beasts, of course. And like that's an excellent that's game, but I can't like see how that'll be played. It's yeah, like isometric yeah. cameras like stuck. What are you gonna yeah. see by yeah. moving your head? Do you become no the beast? I am. Can be, I be the beast? Can I be, hit you? That'd be so weird. See, that'd be that might oh, be interesting. Then you get thrown into. Then you get thrown into the blades, and then you die, and you're that'd, like, be oh, yeah. that'd actually be terrifying if it went from first person from that point on. <laughs> just grabbing each other, just jumping in there to grind. That would be terrifying. Dude. It would be so scary. <laughs> like that'd be a cool game. But... <laughs> like, Where am I? That, it's I all think, black. I think for that they'd almost have to add like a first person's perspective mode, which is probably what they would do. Yeah. Because yeah. a stuck camera is not really going to work for it, but anyway, whatever. No. And Minecraft is coming to it as well, and Notch oh, formally oh, said that we'd never come to the Oculus Rift because he didn't like money. Facebook well, money, or was money, it Zuckerberg? Money, money. Or... Yeah, but dude, he doesn't own it anymore. Minecraft owned by Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Microsoft wait, about that why money. Why would My Minecraft? Wait, why would Microsoft let Minecraft go on Oculus Rift when Microsoft owns it and could go on Hololens instead? Maybe money. for both more money. Yeah, exactly. Money. It comes to money. Give me an M. Give me an O. Give me an N. Give me an E. Give me a Y. What that spell? Money. Thank God, Thank money you. isn't longer than five letters. <laughs> yeah, that was gone. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> I could have went. I could have went. I could have went a lot slower. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. Anyway, Oculus Rift was uh, went up for pre-order the other day and is being released. <laughs> In the US for six hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars in Australia. If in all honesty, if you want it, you have to pre-order because you wouldn't get it any other way. I think they're yeah. already sold out, aren't they? Yeah, they're yeah. already sold out. Like, yeah, they sold out yeah. like first day or some shit. Yeah. It went very and, quickly. And if you wanted to get one in Australia, that was like nine hundred dollars out of your bank. So enjoy that. Yeah, sweet, but, pr sweet princes with lots of money. But uh, but enjoy, I like enjoy, dude, enjoy I like virtual waifus. Yeah, I like eating. For a couple months. Yep. Good. Yep. Alrighty. Yep. To now to the most do we, relevant do we care about it? piece of news. Uh, Wildstar's going free to play. I really don't care. <laughs> yeah. I was kind of. Some, I'll, I'll someone, that. someone out there does. I care. I get now. I'll play I knew I'd, I'd put it up there because Brady go. cares about these shitty little. Hey, I care yeah. about oi, oi, ESO. Oi, no, oi. Guess, guess what Geordie has been playing. I've been playing ESO. I've been playing Elder mm -hmm. Scrolls Online. So screw you, yep. and screw your awful people who don't like. And and you know what I have to say? To, you know what I have to say about it? It's pretty good. <laughs> that's, yep. That's all I got. <laughs> it's pretty good. All it's right. Right. Would, would you... So Activision has been pretty pretty thrifty lately, getting some huge purchases. They purchased uh, the King Digital, who made Candy Crush, for five point nine billion dollars. Seems a bit. Uh, yeah. Over, no, over the a, top. That's chump change. That's, that's chump, chump change. change. Dude, well, dude, they have so much more chump change than that, dude. They're yeah. just throwing fives <laughs> on the table at that point. They've made way more than $5.9 billion. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just find it stupid, like, for how much it was purchasing Disney but, but, acquired Star Wars okay. for four. And okay, it's already right. made $2 billion at the box office. It's like. Okay, but let me put, let me put it this way, right? S Star Wars, okay. For let's say they make, I uh, know this is probably not going to happen. They make a new Star Wars film every year, right? Uh, yeah. You say, every, is every it every two. Every, every year two? for the next five years. Okay. Well, at least. least. All right. Let's I say it was every year and a half. Let's uh. say that it generates like the first one's profit plus a little bit more each year, right? Yeah. Let's say it does that. Okay. After that point, you then need to write scripts and shit again. Mm -hmm. So while that's happening. Candy Crush has, like, the highest player count of any game, quote-unquote, ever. And, like, people don't want to don't wanna legitimately play that game, so they put drop, like, $5 in. So, no matter what, it's also, like... And there's merchandise for Star Wars and stuff, obviously, but it's, it's like, still... It's, like, having the majority stock in the mobile market. Like, they don't care. Like, they're making... Off that $5.9 billion, they're probably going to make that back in, like, what, one, two years max. And at that point, people are still going to be playing it, to be honest, I think. Like, way, way, like, beyond that, I think. Because, I don't know, man. Like, especially if they, like, branched into other markets, like Chinese phone markets and stuff, and get it, like, advertising there, I think, I think they'll be, like, hooked. So, 
both both companies obviously going to have massive merchandising like money made off them but mm. I, it's honestly not that bad of an investment if you can afford 5.9 billion dollars so yeah. And plus, King has all their other games too, like the ones that also have hooks into kids' bank accounts. So, you know. Yeah, very true. And the other and thing that purchased... Them kiddies, you just, you just pay all that money, and then the, the parents are like, hey, where'd all my money go? Yeah, exactly. I thought I had $1,000 here. It's like, shit, are you send me into another, another mortgage. I have to remortgage the house. What you doing to me, kid? Anyway, they also purchased MLG, Major League Gaming, for $46 million. And I yeah. said to Brayden, we'll, we were drunk we'll, as yeah, fuck we'll on New Year's Eve. I was like, why did we not get on this purchase? Like, Yeah, we should have bought it. Like, We had the chance. And, and it, also, I should point out that it was in cash, too. Okay, okay, question. Is MLG really worth buying? I mean, for that Wait, price, it mini- seems or- rather cheap. Yeah, I know, that's yeah. what I mean. Wouldn't that tell you there's a problem? <laughs> yes. But, I mean, you look at who purchased it in Activision, and they've got one of, the, I would say, easily one of the highest rated games, like, competitively in Call of Duty. I don't... But remember, they bought that other service that they ran into the ground. Like, that other, like, I don't know, like, video competitive Twitch-like thing that was also pretty popular... And then they kind of just let it just sink into, like, liquidation, basically. That's I don't know. True. It's so weird. Uh, I, guess, I don't know. Yeah, Bobby, MLG Bobby was weird, man. MLG was very niche in the sense that, like, it was only for pro gamers. And, like, as soon as, like, uh, who was it? Nadeshot or Formal from Optic found out that they had that... They ripped up their contracts. Like, they were in multi-year contracts with MLG, and they were just like... Shh. I'm going to Twitch. So Wait, like, so he got out of his contract? He got out of his contract because he signed it with MLG, not Activision. Oh, what and a guy. So, so he was just like, uh, fuck this, and all these obligations having to stream a certain amount of hours each day, I'll just go to Twitch, stream my own hours, and have my own sub- uh, donate button where you don't take a cut from it. Yeah. So he was just like, the good stuff. more money. Well, Twitch takes a cup, but yeah, you know. When, when you take when you win those COD champs and you get the subscribe button money. Anyway, that's that's old news. Activision. We'll see what happens with MLG and Candy Crush and, and everything along those lines. Next up, one of our favorite games of the year uh, to play as a group is uh, Rocket League, and it generated fifty million dollars so far. That's a lot of moolah. That's a that's a one or two dollars. Bad. It's not bad, yeah, it's, it's a couple bucks to throw, I mean, on, the, throw for, on that. For a game that only lasts five minutes per round, it is surprisingly, like, replayable. Every game's different. Yeah, it Just is. Just like many other games. Every game's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's very true, but like, um... Wow, what the fuck was that with my voice? Um, yeah, no, I thought that's... <laughs> $50 million, that's not bad. <laughs> oh, I'm derailing this podcast in my voice right now. I didn't right. hear Don't your voice derail it. <laughs> Don't either. What are you talking about? Yeah, right. I mean, what are they going to do? They're going to put it back into more DLC. Yeah, make more true. maps. Yeah, just more money. Give me the money. They need it's more game up. modes. That's what they need, and not none of this Dude, hockey puck bullshit. Yeah, man, I was going to say, didn't they have like hockey or some oh, shit? Yeah, that was we the played shittest it. It was... game mode. Why? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go play it right now. Like your car just right slid now. on ice, and the puck yeah. was hard as to hit. What are you talking about? It's flatter and larger than the ball. <laughs> it, 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 it moves. The thing. It just moves differently. Yeah. It Clearly, you, you need to get on my hockey expertise level. Then. <laughs> I used to play roller hockey, so I'm pretty expertise at it. IRL. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Damn. I'm just, I'm just shooting. <laughs> uh, next up, Kojima has officially left oh, Konami Kojima and is son. making games with PlayStation Four. Both PlayStation and PC, so don't worry. You can Wait get it on your console and your computer. I Wait think a that's minute, excellent. Boys. We're gonna have to do a clap for a minute. Hold on. Um, let me. No, wait, 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 oh. wait, 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 wait. Oh. Too early. Um, he's uh, he got an award, didn't he? He got like a lifetime. He, he made it to a Hall of Fame for yes, something. Yes, he did. And, I don't know what it was though. Uh, just for his effort to games and stuff like that, I believe. Inducted into him. the IA. Wait, 
AIAS Hall of Fame for, yeah, for basically his expertise in story and inter interactive arts and sciences. All right, there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the man. And fuck Konami for banning him from the Game Awards. God Hashtag damn. Hashtag fuck Konami. Yeah, pretty much. Now, oh. now, that, now that he's left Konami, people have no reason to support them anymore. Yeah, basically. Yeah. But, uh, it, this is really exciting that he's not with Konami anymore. Like, yeah. I think PlayStation's just going to go, here, use all of the money you want. Yeah, pretty just much. Just make it. Just make it. And you could, then, you could yeah. see Andrew House's face. He was like, this is so exciting, but we're going to lose so much money. Dude, he's just going to be so excited. Dude, his face in those photos. He was just like, we're going to lose so much money, but it's okay. Yeah, he was just like, we've got Kojima here, guys. He's finally home. What accent home. is that? That's, that's that guy's accent. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, he's a very jolly fellow. <laughs> uh, so, far out. Next up is Steam, letting you permanently delete games from your account, but you can re-download them later if you want to. So it means that all those shitty games you get in bundles and use up for the money for from their gift from their uh, trading cards mm -hmm. you can now get, and then you can delete it and never see it again, which is uh, excellent. Hey, hey, have, you, have, you, have, you, have, have you looked, Alex? Have you looked at your um, your, your gift site lately? Did you get the the PewDiePie game? No, I haven't. Ugh. I haven't been on Steam lately. Ugh. Uh, I wouldn't go on there. Because I, I gave you something. Oh well, I know what's what I'm doing after this. I'm getting rid of PewDiePie. <laughs> You're evil. All right, can I, can I can I talk about this next one? Yeah, sure. You go for it, Jody. All right, all right, all right, all right kids. Now, there's not many developers that I hate besides Konami, <laughs> but Tim Schafer is one of them. All right, Ooh. I'll give you this. He's made he's Double made some fine. good games. Okay, he's made some good games. Don't get me wrong, but the guy doesn't know how to fucking budget to save his life. Like the last two games, oh, I that he's, agree. he okay, okay, he had that story one, Grim first Fandango? episode pretty good, second uh -oh. one shit, I don't know, whatever the episode one was, and then the space one, Deep Space Nine Station, some something, yeah, yeah. okay, they were just like, oh yeah, here's all the features, they're coming, they're coming. Uh, actually, we've added other random things that have nothing to do with the game into it, and also we're done. And then everyone was like, what do you mean you're done? It's like we have no money for this project. It's done. And then everyone's like, what do you mean? You're missing, like, three quarters of the game. And it's like, that's it. I'm like, it's because he can't fucking budget. He's terrible with money. Mm -hmm. He's an idiot. Doesn't and then people work for Double Fine? People? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's the director. Like, he's the he's, leader of it. And yeah. now, Psychonauts 2 just got fully funded. And holy shit. Okay? No. This, no. Is, this is terrible. I don't know why they keep giving him money. It's going to burn. It's, mm. oh, and it's going to be such a sad burn. It's gonna be such a sad burn because people are gonna people are gonna be people. Uh, you, you know why? You know why they'd be like, oh, so I could order. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be so good. Oh, number two. Oh. Oh, and then they'll play. They'll play it, and they'll be like, what the fuck is this? He's literally cashing in on nostalgia. He's yeah. cashing in on people's yep. nostalgia. He's done it like twice now, mm -hmm. three times. Like, oh, he just. Remember stacking that little game that was really short that everyone actually really liked about the little like Russian dolls that like eat up into themselves? Yeah, everyone, yeah. Like, he needs to do things like that. He needs small games that have really cool ideas that are really short and sweet. That's what he's good at because he can only spend so much on a four-hour story. When he gets these big crazy ideas, he goes nuts. He goes mm. nuts, and he just he cannot unless he's bought. Like hired an, a special accountant that tells him where the money needs to go. This is going to be, like, I hope it's not okay. And it, they need to prove me wrong, but I think this game is going to flop. Ooh. I think it's going to flop. You're the, you, really. you are not. You're not the first person who said has, who I've heard say all this type of stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. So how? Just for clarification, do you know how much it it got in its Kickstarter campaign? I think it's at like nearly four mil now. They needed Fuck. three point five, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm I, really confused by companies that have made a lot of money in the past, like Double Fine Productions, yet they still do Kickstarters. Uh, no, like, that's no, what no, really confuses no, me. A, they need it though. That's they need the it because yep. they, they they have clearly no spend too much money. They don't have anything to spend because, because the Kickstarter yeah. is basically okay. So they they get the Kickstarter money, and then you you could assume with the staff you need at least what. Five hundred thousand to a million dollars sub on the side for the developers, right? Yeah, right, something like that, 
or at least at least to 500 grand, like yeah. somewhat up to that point. The rest of it is meant to make a game. Now, we we know usually numbers of games and how much they cost, and they're usually a lot more than what's left over from a Kickstarter. This, 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 okay, the the thing is, like it, okay, in the film business, like what I'm at now, this is exact same thing. What happens? If you want to make something good, what a lot of the indie people do, especially for Kickstarters, they make the game and then the leftover money is what you get. Say for me, like I want to make a, a um, an ad and I get $10,000. $10, I need to basically, do I decide I want $5,000 so I need to spend $5,000 on my equipment and all that? No, mm. you go, okay. Where where can I put money into and how can I save money? Yeah. They're this thinking, oh, I'm going to get all the money and then you have like a million dollars left and you're like, oh, that's not enough to make this. And then they've already given all the money out and they're like, oh, what do we do now? That's the only way they're going to do it. They need to make the game first. need to make the game first. first. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then distribute funds. And even if that yep. means for a while that your studio... Like, you kind of have to, like, really struggle on a salary. Like, as Tim Schafer, he should cut his paycheck just like the guy from Nintendo did in their hard times, mm. right? Like, that mm. saved his company huge amounts because he cut, like, I don't know, what was it? Like, a couple mil off his yeah. paycheck or something? That's huge. A couple yeah, it's, mil. it's a huge difference when you look at, especially when you look at, like, how much they've got from the Kickstarter. It's like... Yeah. yeah. They need... They need to make a base salary, which they should give, like, straight... I think they should honestly give it up front, right? So mm. that they've already been paid, and that they just have to work on it. And from that point, the person who's directing it, they make the game, and then whatever's left over, he keeps as his thing. And then watch the revenue come in from game sales, right? Well, you shouldn't well, be really well, worried. Well, they, they can always do... There's a thing what they do. Like, you, you can say, oh, if you do this, we give you, like, say this salary and then we'll give you like one percent of the profit or something like that they they can always do that type of stuff but yeah, like percentage. the owners don't want to do that they just yep. don't want to give away profit when they could just say you could it's the same thing you could say oh, oh you oh. Oh, oh, i won't give you any salary but you get three percent of the profit okay guys yeah. i got something to tell you is this also didn't go through kickstarter it went through something called a fig now let me explain <laughs> this right so you yep. can either uh, just put money behind it like a normal Kickstarter, right? Or you can like invest in the game. See, right? that's cool. No, no, <laughs> that's okay. not cool because one, it means that if you're, if people who invest in it, it the game needs to sell more for them to make money off it. Like the people who invest actually make money the more it sells, right? Yeah. So, Fig is also made by like one of the guys who used to work at Double Fine and they're running it through this so I'm very confused if this is even like I don't know or at least it's something they have some attachment to Fig in some way and it's just I don't know I'd just be very scared if I was actually investing investing money into it as if it was stock like yeah okay they're, they're, the goal was $3,300,000 they're at $3.5 million right now sorry okay yeah so still a fair chunk of money it's like with one day left They've got right. one day left. All yeah. right. But yeah, I don't know. I don't, don't pre-order kids. Just watch, see what happens, and then go from there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. All right. Let's Next up is you two. Uh, have you seen anything yeah. on this, Brayden, or you want me to talk about it? All, all the new voices and whatnot. The top one. Uh, no. Okay. So, League's coming out with a new character probably this month, probably end of, near end of the month or start of the next month. Um, we think his name is Jin, and his title's called The, the Dead Eye or something, Dead Shot, I forget what it was. But um, mm-hmm. apparently, a lot of, like, I've been reading a lot of forums and stuff, and they might think he's actually, a, like, a support AD carry, and that his, his guns, because oh, he has, he has guns. Be, to me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No. I, I thought he was look at a tree man I thought he was just like I thought he was going to be a top player in all honesty he's got they, they, they think he's they're actually changing up the support dynamic because support never has weaponry right basically well like actual actual guns They I think they they are going for like changing the dynamic of how support works so like 
all the teasers have different heroes being shot in different places of like things that they can't have, but like I, I like wants. So they think because like when they're shown the trailers, it's come out with like fire and light elements and stuff like that. They think he's going to be a support marksman with that comes with different elements on each of his abilities. So mm-hmm. that that that's what the like forums and stuff are thinking. So I think that'll be really cool if it's actually so like, like a, so one so one shot would would slow them, one would give them a burn, yeah, one like would, one one would snare, one would burn, uh, yeah. one would one would like one of the abilities they think is light. So I'm guessing that means like kind of like mark them. So they can be visible mm. across the map, probably with a bit of damage or something. Mm. But yeah, so that'd be really cool to have like a support AD, AD carry, I guess. Mm. Brayden, mm. you're up for the Harimas Tayoka thing. Hey, I must go. Oh, they're doing all the, they're repackaging all the voices. So, like, they changed a lot of the Japanese voices, basically. Yep. And they're, they're, they're adding more Japanese voice packs mm-hmm. from like really um, popular, like actual people who do anime series and stuff. So, mm-hmm. if you're Japanese, it's a good time to be alive. You know, you, you do know we can have those voices, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Is that it? That's yep. leaked news. All righty. So next up is we're doing kind of our own take on the game awards. It's not so much. Um, we're giving out an award, it's just like, we're going to say, for different categories, who we think has done well. So we're going to start completely, off... Completely subjective, though. Yeah, but like out of a group of group of companies or games, etc. So we're going to start off with uh, Developer of the Year. So we've got some pretty big, big uh, companies here. We've got Bethesda, uh, who made Fallout 4, CD Projekt Red, who made Witcher 3... Uh, from software, Bloodborne. Bloodborne, yes, mm-hmm. excellent game. Uh, Kojima Productions, of course, who made uh, Metal Gear Solid, and uh, Nintendo, who've always got something. Hey, they made Splatoon. They made yeah, uh, Splatoon. Uh, yeah, yes, man. they made I, I um, uh, Mario so, Maker. So they made uh, Yoshi's Monster Hunter Four. They Yoshi's made. I can keep naming them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's fair, cool. So, um, I've... You're a hater. I've, I've watched uh, Let's Plays of uh, <laughs> Bloodborne. I'm sorry, I played Bloodborne, a little bit of Bloodborne, and I've watched a Let's Play for um, Fallout 4 and Metal Gear Solid. And they all look really good. Bloodborne, I can only, I can only say from personal experience, made an excellent game. From, from so I've heard a lot of rage stories. I've heard a lot of rage stories. I've seen a little bit of it. I've never, I haven't played it, but I've heard it's really good. I yeah. beat the first boss my first time playing the game <laughs> at my friend's house. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I have a friend who's, who, who couldn't get past like 15 minutes of the game and he's kept dying over and over and over. Oh God! <laughs> wow. <laughs> We so, had vastly uh, different experiences then. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> Braden, you played. Uh, I've played I forgot Witcher, to put up I whoever made. Four. I forget to put up a uh, Dragon Age. I Dragon Age. Was was Dragon I finished Age. Fallout Four. I finished Witcher. Oh, Dragon Age was EA. Yep. Isn't it? Yeah. Inquisition. Yep. Yes. So I forgot to put up that up there, but. Uh, yeah, no. Nah, that's all right. That so, was 2014, anyway. That's 2000. Oh, was it? Whoops, my bad. Yeah, November 2014. <laughs> okay, so like, nope. so I've only played one, so I can only really comment on one. But from what I've seen, uh, which, uh, Fallout 4 looks pretty decent. I've been watching Nova's Let's Play of that. That's been pretty good. But you guys have probably played more, so what do you guys think? It's a great game. I yeah. love that game. Yeah, I, yeah it's... it's, it's yep. I mean, I've played it for like probably nearly 100 hours now. Oh, I've, 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 I've done... I think two and a half days of it. Yep. So, uh, it's 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 base. Well, we'll save that for later. But it gets um, a bit grindy. In all honesty, it gets a bit grindy. It depends, it depends how you play it. Like a lot of people now, like bagging it for things like, oh, this isn't in it, and this isn't it. And the problem is with people, is they never like just judge the game on what's actually in the box. Oh, they always, I, I they love always go, They always go, oh man, why isn't Oh shit! This is missing, and this is missing. What is right? Well, like, well, like, it's, like, it's like you gotta judge. People are judging the game for things that aren't in the game. If that makes sense, like that, mm-hmm. they feel entitled to have it in the game. You know, like mm. oh, it's like, dude, it's 
their first time working on a new console, and they keep they just miss small things in Bethesda games, like the actual like s- story events of it, like where like skeletons are like holding hands in different spots, or like ones that are sitting down with like a fedora on it, and then on like the little like sign to it, it says "Milady" and shit. Like people just miss <laughs> these small details, and like they I are. I saw that myself. Yeah, it's good. Um, but I don't know. People would always judge this game from what I've heard on things that aren't in the game and I'm like I don't know how you can do a fair judgement on that for things that aren't in the game that they never intended for to be there until like maybe DLC or something so I don't know yeah so out of these ones who do you reckon takes it do you reckon Bethesda well personally for me I think Kojima Productions is developer of the year because one holy shit they had to deal with fucking Konami mm. that, that's a fucking mm-hmm. just, you know mm. That's that's some hard shit to deal with, and just like being stuck there for so long, and producing a game like that. Like I've played that game, and that it game has so many crazy good. systems that you didn't think would work, like dropping boxes on people's heads, yep. and like just like attaching like tanks to balloons and floating them up in the air, and setting a D dog with a little knife on his vest to mm-hmm. cut its throats, and like rocket punch arms that just fly in and stun people onto the ground, and Cardboard boxes got gliding down sand and you knock people over on them. Like, mm. who, who does this? Like, waifu boxes as well? Like, what? like it's crazy that that game was even made, to be honest. Like, it's so, so big just and like so well... There. It's so, No, it's just so well developed. Like, so much time went into it. And I think under the pressure that he was, like, Hideo Kojima was under... It's unbelievable, I th- and I think it has to go to Kojima this year for Game of the Year or Developer, oh, so developer of the Year. Yep. Raiden, what's what's yours? Do you reckon? Uh, I, I reckon because of uh, Witcher Three. Witcher Three was incredibly mad. There's so much to it. It's such a big game, and I oh, know I think they deserve it. Okay. Um, City Project Red, yeah. City Project Red. Mine goes to From uh, From Software, as I said, because it was the only one I played out of that list. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. But yes, that's the only one I can give they're it to. They're good developers, anyway. Yeah. yeah, they're good. They're good. I'll probably get around to the other two, the other ones later. But yeah. Uh, yep. Next up is best independent game. So we've got Woo! Undertale. This Rocket was a League. good year for indies. It definitely was. Uh, Rocket League, Ori and the Blind Forest, Her Story, and Axiom Verge. So they're all excellent titles. Oh, yeah, they are. <laughs> um, this was really yeah. tough because I. had... I liked everything on that list. I haven't played much of Undertale. Uh, I did play a bit when I was at Brayden's house, but... He's played a little bit of mine. All, I have played the rest of them, and, like, far out, it's hard. definitely one of the hardest picks here on the out of any category, but I went with her story, because I, I thought that was excellent. Yeah, fair enough. It's an excellent game. It's got such yeah. a cool premises. Yeah. I thought it was just different, and I... I don't know, I guess independent to me is someone who uh, kind of breaks the borders and does just that, does something very different. And I think her story was that game for me. Yeah, fair enough. I don't know. For me, it was definitely Undertale. Undertale was the craziest little game of this year. Like, it was just, it was written with just, like, so much heart and, like, charisma and just the characters which is the funniest things I've ever seen. Just, like, there's this one section where it's, like, all these tiles, and you have to know what, like, they all do, and then it just, it just, it just switches, like, just so fast. There's just so just like, many. Shit. Yep. That was amazing. That game, hilarious. And there's a part where you have to get past a dog, and it's literally, oh. you stand still, and, the, like, the bars down the bottom, just he just doesn't notice you if you actually stand still. Amazing. Amazing did, game. Did, did you do the one where you have to pet the dog and his neck just keeps going? Yep. And yep. going? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. And then the end. The end makes you so sad. Oh, my lord. <sighs> yep. That game. Oh, my God. That's a... Uh, yep. That's definitely the best independent game for me this year. Just so many, so many heart-filled moments. It's a great... It's a great game. I, I, I wanted to say Ori because that, that, that game that was, was amazingly made. But yeah, I have to go Undertale as well. On the tail, all right, easy. Uh, next up is best mobile or handheld game. The uh, we had Fallout Shelter, Lara Croft Go, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and Oli Oli 2. 
Holy I wood. would say, I would say uh, Monster Hunter Four Ultimate. Four Ultimate, yeah. I don't know if either of you played that, but like, no, I don't know. The, the 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 whole like, it, it's a niche that like, if you get into it, it's a bit grindy and whatnot, but it's really fun when you play with friends, and it's it has so much to it, and it's it's beautiful how a big, the game is made, like the the like the whole like world around it is like yeah. is everything's kind of like you can kind of like interact yeah, with and it changes mm -hmm. and, and changes and whatnot but mm. yeah okay. uh, I would uh, definitely say that I'd have to say Fallout Shelter that's Fallout definitely Shelter. the game I put the most mobile time into this year but it, it's fun like it's it's like I, I kind of like, just forgot a, about the game in all yeah, honesty yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's like once you get to a certain point like where I have everything and I got like my my shelter's like maxed out that's that's why I stopped playing it but like it, it's, it was a good time waster that's for sure you know, I haven't got it on the list, but uh, I'm going to have late entrant for mobile games. Star Wars Uprising. Honest to God, one of the best mobile games I've played in a while. So it's just like you run around, you do missions, etc. Uh, you collect armor, weapons, and just level up your character and do missions. Some of them are kind of repetitive, but I what mean, game of course. Isn't? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You, you know, you know, you know, you know, a game that no one has said. It's, it's Pokemon Shuffle, man. Have you have you played it? It's great, great one, great time, great times, great times. Yep. Times. Yep. <laughs> you, yep. The real have hard you sell on that game. You really sold me on it, Reed. Have I played no, it? No, Jordy. Have you played it? It's, have it's you like, played it? It's like Bejeweled yeah. mixed with Pokemon catching. Yes. Huh. huh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yep. but it was originally on the DS like two years ago, and I had it on that, and then all of a sudden it came on your phone and was like, this year, and I'm like, the fuck is this? Like, I, already, I played it already. But good. <laughs> good stuff. I put it on my phone, and um, yeah, that's that, that's my spare time. All right. Yeah, it's good stuff. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, Monster Hunter. All right, Monster Hunter, Fallout Shelter, and Star Wars Uprising. Okay, best narrative. Her story, Life is Strange. Tales from the Borderlands, The Witcher 3, and Until Dawn. Um, so, good, good, good variety here. Yep. <laughs> uh, Until Dawn, I think, was one of the most let's mm -hmm. played games this year. I saw so many YouTubers do that, and... Oh, by fuck, so much do it. Oh, uh, I honestly should have bought that over... Every little thing changed it. Yeah, you really should have. <laughs> Until Dawn. Yeah, <laughs> Far out, yeah. Um, I went Life is Strange. That was uh, an ep uh, pardon me, excellent episodic game. I mean, I don't know. It's just good. There were lots of... It's good that it's not Telltale. <laughs> yes, for once, yeah, like a game that isn't Telltale. As, as much as Telltale is good, well. but yes, exactly. That's, that's what I like about it. It's a Telltale game done well by someone who's not Telltale. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think that, that was my pick anyway. Um, yeah, life is strange, and I think it needed to. It deserved to win an award on the list. Um, yeah. Yep. Well, now I'm going to be hypocritical and say Tales from the Borderlands, <laughs> but yep. that's because that game is hilarious, and it, it is. Also, it also explores the Borderlands world kind of like the actual games didn't really. Like mm. I don't know. I think you learn so much more yeah, cause, about cause... the world from it than the actual. And the characters are so well written, Reese and is it an just excellent character. They're all excellent characters. I feel like the what's it, Fio, is Fiona? Fiona, her name? Fiona? that's yeah, the one. Fiona. Yeah, she's an excellent character as Fiona. well. And I think the story has like a really good pace to it, and it's got the good mix of humor and like action and cuties and stuff like that. Also, final episode, one of the biggest plot twists I've ever seen in a game. No spoilers. No spoilers. No spoilers. Wait, but if you, if I've you... only seen the first two. I've only seen the first oh, okay, two. Okay. I've only seen... Okay. Uh, yeah, that's... I've only seen the first two. I went Life is Strange, but... Heck. It was it was good. But Until Dawn also had some excellent uh, excellent narrative yeah. and acting. Because yeah, they did full I, I, motion Until Dawn would be mine. Yeah. I, even though I hate hate scary, after you showed me a bit of it, I started watching a bit, and, like, mm. I, 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 it, it, everyone plays it differently. Like, no matter what you do... Like, you're going to do something different to someone else, and it's going to be a different story every time, I yeah. reckon. Like, I love, mm. uh, I can't think of the developer right now, but they made Heavy Rain, 
and uh oh the guy it was it's a basically a david cage game but it's better than david cage game it's a david cage game he wish he made <laughs> who made that oh quantic quantic dream yeah, yeah. And by david cage yes and they made yeah the, they've got a game coming out later this year as well detroit <laughs> yes yeah and beyond two souls with ellen page and that was an excellent game too yeah i love mm-hmm. i love those sort of games but yeah there we go uh, so best score and soundtrack. All right, soundtrack? I'll talk about all these because apparently you guys yeah. just don't listen. So I put put a couple down. Um, I don't so listen. Halo Five has its its classic soundtrack back, back with like even more like range to it. It's got like massive massive orchestra behind it. It's like it's uh, that's that's my personal soundtrack of the year. It is it's just such a large compilation, and then like in the in the quiet sections it has like really nice undertones to it, and it's like it's such an immersive sound for that universe. So that for me is my favorite soundtrack of the year. Um, but other notable mentions: Metal Gear Solid had a a solid soundtrack. Oh. Um, Undertale had a really. Um, <laughs> A really amazing um, a score to it as well, just by the one guy who made it as well, and it's unbelievable that with his time he could also make such a like, you could it's like honestly like a soundtrack you could just buy and download, and it would just sound like just normal like electronica chip music. It's real good. Mm. Witcher three, obviously another massive orchestra for a massive game, just really like heavenly sounds and like um, like the the light parts, and then just really thunderous, really deep. Um, sounds for when it's in combat and stuff like that. It's a really, really incredible soundtrack. And then Distance, this one is early, in early access, and it's a Tron, Tron-like racer, but it just has that like constant like like dun dun dun, and then like just it just ramps up even more as the like stages get more hectic, and it's like super Tron and synthy, and it's really awesome. So if you guys guys happen to have like 10 to 20 dollars i recommend picking up distance it's a really it's a really cool game where it's like you switch between like your car mode like driving on the track and stuff and dodging obstacles and then like your car fly mode where it like gets wings and stuff and you fly through stuff and anti-gravity sections is sick it's it's an awesome game hmm. mm-hmm. but yeah all amazing soundtracks this year for games awesome i wish i could say i had one but i don't know <laughs> I got your boys coming. Yeah. No, no. When you when you brought it under tower, yeah, it does. It's a it's a very, very beautiful soundtrack. Yep. Uh, okay. Next is best performance. We've got Brian T. Delaney for Fallout Four, Ashley Birch as Chloe Price in Life Is Strange, uh, Camilla Luddington as Lara Croft in Rise of the Tomb Raider, Doug Cockle as Geralt in Witcher Three, Mark Hamill as the Joker in Batman: Arkham Knight, and Visa. Viva Surfert in her I believe story. It, I, believe it's Ger- I believe it's Geralt. <laughs> Ger- oh, Geralt. Whoops. Geralt. <laughs> Geralt. <Whoops>. Geralt. <laughs> My bad. Uh, Geralt. Good. Um, mm. Yeah, I again went the lady from her story. I just thought that that was, again, very different, very good, very well portrayed, and I like that. Yep, fair enough. Braden? Um, I'll probably go uh, Doug Cockle. He he really could make you believe the character. He was really good. He got that gruff voice, man. Yeah, the very gruff man. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got that yeah. witch voice. Like if if you yeah. put a different voice actor behind another witcher, I honestly don't know how I feel unless it's like Siri or something. Like I don't know. <laughs> It's just yeah. You need the no, you, not you need, need the, the right Apple, person for the right Apple, character. I, I'm talking about the one from the game, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, he has he has like the perfect like you would expect from a a rough tough like yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. And then mine was Brian yeah. T. Delaney because in my head, if there was going to be a voice character in Fallout, that's actually what it would sound like for the main protagonist. And I was like, what? Like when I heard it. So I was very happy when um. Oh, I forget that ham ham radio podcast guy by here who does it called Mr. Maddie Plays. He got um, Brian T. Delaney on before the actual game came out, 
And like when I heard his voice, and he's just like, and then they were talking about questions and stuff. And he's like, oh no, uh, my actual voice is like the the voice that I use for it. And he had like the perfect Boston Boston like sound, mm. and it was so authentic. And I was like, yes, okay, I'm now not displeased that there is a voice actor. And also the um the the girl who does it too. Um, Shit, I don't remember her name. But she is also very good as yeah. well. Yep. Yeah, I've been mm-hmm. I've been listening to her of course in uh, James's Let's Play, but yeah. Of course, mm-hmm. very good very good yep. voices. All of the, all of the voice actors in that game are actually pretty decent. Like yeah, that. they got so many more than last time. They've got like like eighty to a hundred new voice actors in that game. And they all do like many different voices, so you basically don't ever run into the same voice twice. Yeah. The amazing. Co- the Codsworth voice is also very good. The English, oh, dude. He's <laughs> and then um, what's her name? Uh, Curie. Yeah. The f- French one. <laughs> it's so yeah, good. Very good. Uh, so yeah, Braden said Geralt. Uh, so we've got best shooter is Call of Duty Black Ops Three, Destiny: The Taken King, Halo Five: Guardians, Splatoon, or Star Wars Battlefront. Now, before we get on to okay, this, guys, I'm guys, just guys, gonna guys, say, guys, guys, no. Oh. Yeah, go, go. I was just gonna say I'm so disappointed in Star Wars Battlefront. You like, mean Star Wars I hyped this front. game up so much oh. on podcasts, and like, oh, I have never been more disappointed in a in a, in a game at all. Like, never. More so in a Star Wars game. Like, I've been playing Jedi Academy multiplayer and Star Wars Battlefront two, and I. Uh, uh, words I can't put into words how disappointed I am by this game. EA, you you, you, you mean to tell you, you how you up. how you can put it in words? Yeah. You know how you can put it in words? There's really only one game that really deserves it, and that was Call of Duty, I think. Ooh. In all like Splatoon, no okay, let, let me let me say why. Splatoon, it brought a new dynamic to shooting, but it it's it didn't Dom- really it was didn't really off. dominate it. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. Um, Halo 5 didn't really change too much and I, I just and Destiny's for Destiny the Taken King that's that's DLC. Come on. Come on people. Yeah. We you could you could easily say if <laughs> Overwatch came out this year. Oh yeah. That is, that, that 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 would yeah. but it cuz it's it's beta. You can't really yeah. classify it as coming out. Yeah. That would have easily won by a long shot. But like then you really just have Call of Duty and yeah. then I mean, I, I, I personally have to say that. Mm. Personally, for me, I've only played like Halo Five Guardians, so I th- I thought it was actually really sound. I think they've come back to like, it's been the closest they've been to Halo Three in a long time, to be honest. Like, I think give give three four three one more game, and I think they'll actually hit that code again, mm. like that that sweet sweet Halo Three pie. Um, I think they're in the right spot with the mechanics that they added, like the the thruster packs and stuff. I think it's it's good because it's evolving with the times. Like now, if you went back to like boots on the ground stuff, I feel people would be almost and sprinting. Yeah, I feel people would be like, "Where are we going? Like, is this 2006? Like, what happened? We lost a sprint button. Like, it'd be the equivalent of Fallout 4 coming without sprinting." Like you'd be walking still. Like what the fuck? It's like 2015. You gotta gotta have that shit in the game. Like not everyone can. Well, everyone sit wants to move quicker. Everyone wants to do shit quicker. So you just yeah, can't exactly. do it. Like, Games are can't. just naturally becoming more quicker. But yeah. um, Halo Five is more methodical. Time. But I think for actual, like from what I've seen from Call of Duty, it. I mean, if I played it, I think I would honestly prefer it. It's a, it's uh, very I played, good. Okay, okay. I played it's, both. I played both. You know, it's, you know, it's a sad year when Call of Duty is the best shooter, right? Yeah. Right. Like yeah. last year, we had um, Wolfenstein. That, that was, was good. amazing. That was a, that was my favorite shooter of last year, and then it's back to Call of Duty. Yeah. Like, it's, well, like, it's wait, such a weird don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Next year, Overwatch will win it. Don't yeah. worry. Oh, I yeah. mean, you look at shooters, oh, yeah. and like shooters are usually like the dominant market for. Not anymore. No, and that's it's of course it's like a change of the time, but again, yeah, yeah. It's just like, Mo- Moba shooters next year. That's yeah. that'll be its own genre. So, anyway. like I again, I went Call of Duty Black Ops Three as my game of the of uh, game best shooter. Sorry, um, I've been playing a lot of the zombies and zombies. You don't have that, I guess, jetpacks and specialists, and that's one of the cool things as well. Is you can choose a specialist in Call of Duty this year, 
and so each of them have different abilities like there are two abilities for each specialist but like See, zombies... even that even that's making it more mobish don't you agree yes i mm -hmm. do i 100 percent agree um but like zombies this year has been excellent like i've been playing it with some of my friends and uh we've had we've been going like two hours a uh, two hour sessions each each game and like yeah i that, that was the only reason i ever bought treyarch games i've actually i'm actually gonna wait for black like i always buy treyarch once because then call of duty feels fresh every time you buy like a game in a, the three-year cycle and you just mm. wait for your the, the developer you like so when the game's on sale i'm gonna pick it up because i i bought number two for the zombies and number one for the zombies so the zombies in this is excellent like i'm talking yeah, really I've, good i've watched a lot of gameplay on it it is really mm -hmm. good like we like we my friend josh and i we've kind of gotten into a cycle where like we know what we want to do there are the four rituals we do them straight away we get pack a punch and it's just like it's fun i guess yeah. like it's like of course the way i just said it it seems kind of grindy i yeah, guess that to start hectic. it off it's but really it's, cool it's like cthulhu themed and stuff yes yes yeah, it's, it's got the three-headed yeah. beast called a magua and that thing it's it's, it's awesome <laughs> it's awesome honestly love it so my shooter of the year is call of duty black ops 3 mm -hmm. hmm uh, next mm. up is best action adventure game. So we've got Assassin's Creed Syndicate. I feel is, this is so easy. Which is much better than uh, Unity last year. It actually worked. Uh, yeah, that's one, yep. the one one thing. Uh, Batman <laughs> Arkham Knight uh, still broken on PC. Um, Metal Gear Solid Five: yep. The Phantom Pain, excellent Ooh. game. Ori and the Blind Forest and Rise of the Tomb Raider. I can see only two real contun contenders here in Ori and the Blind them, them Contenders. Them yeah. contenders. Mm. In Ori and the Blind Forest and Metal Gear Solid Five, the Phantom They're my Pain. favorite contenders. I think I those love are the my only contenders. two. Yeah. Well, my contender and winner would have to be Ori and Blind Forest because I haven't played Metal Gear, and I <laughs> no no hey, 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 I'll stab you at with a booger. Yep. Then I could do it. Yep. yep. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I'll say Orion Blind Forest because I legit as soon as like as soon as that game came out, I got it really, and yeah. I finished the whole thing. And I don't often finish games, no, so I actually finished that game. So uh, it's, that yeah. did enough for me. Fair yeah. enough. Though. Very beautiful game as well. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna say Metal Gear Solid: The Phantom Pain. From when I played it, holy shit. That game is, like, on acid, man. Like, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Like, you want to drop a truck on someone, they just fling across the map, do it. You want to ride into battle on, like, a mech that runs on, like, two legs that plays a cassette tape, do it. Like, whatever, man. Like... I don't want a cassette tape. Screw that. I want that ox cord with my iPhone in it, mate. Matt, he'll do it, then. And before you guys start bitching and whining that Just Cause 3 isn't on the list... Um, yeah... That's broken on console, so can't add it as a contender. But mine is Ori in the Blind Forest. I had Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Pain, but now that I think about it, Ori in the Blind Forest was an excellent game. And yeah, I, it, it deserves it again. It's beautiful, excellent. That was did have a nice soundtrack. That was one that I actually remember. Y'all um, are bitches. Hey. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, I don't know. That's hey, just my t my one. I if guess. You did, if you didn't cry in the first fifteen Ten minutes seconds. of that, mm. yeah, you're not you're not a real person. Yeah, you're an alien. I'll have to sit down and play it. It is. It's an excellent game. I th I Braid I was talking to Braden about it. Was it before it released? And then we ended up. Um. Yeah. 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 Before it released. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, this game would be great. Yeah. This looks really good. And then, and then I got it, and then I was like, oh, hey, you should play this game. He's like, oh, I'm, that's the game I was talking about. <laughs> that's exactly how it sounded yeah, as well. Yeah, it's very true. That's, <laughs> that's how most conversations go with me. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, next up is best role-playing game. We've got Bloodborne, Fallout 4, The Witcher 3, Undertale, and Pillars of Eternity. Witcher 3. What? Witcher 3? Yep. You're going Witcher 3 over Fallout 4. Fallout 4 isn't really a role-playing game anymore. It's mm -hmm. Lost World's RP... To me, Fall like, I love Fallout 4, don't get me wrong, but it's lost its RPG elements. Like, in the other games, there was a karma system, right? Like, you could be an evil bastard, or you could be the savior of the wasteland. In this one, you could be a bad guy, but you're kind of just a good dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, and in that game, like, the evil ending is just subjective. Like mm. of the of the factions that you can go with, I'm not gonna spoil anything. But like each 
each faction is just subjective to whether they're good or not. To like where you stand as like a, like a person or whatever, like to whatever you kind of person you want to be in the game. But like you can't be like the guy who just murders everyone because there's no there's no karma system. They're not gonna mm. there's no factions that are like, hey man, you're innately evil. Come yeah, with us. Like, like, like dude, every, dude, every time I accidentally kill someone, I freak the shit out and restart. I didn't mean to do it. But, I didn't mean to But see, like, like in New no, Vegas, Legion was <laughs> like if you wanted to just kill every good good doer, you join Legion. Because they're yeah. bloodthirsty crazy animals. Like <laughs> Like, and then if you want to be good, you'd, you'd go either independent, I mean, sorry, if you, you're good, bleh, you'd go NCR, or if you were just like, nah, fuck everyone, you'd go independent Vegas. Mm. So, like, y- you had a lot of... What they need to do for the next Fallout is have Obsidian write it, and then Bethesda build the world. Because Bethesda builds the world better than any games developer I've ever seen, and Obsidian can write write stories for the life of them. Like, Pillars of Eternity, that's another one on here. That is an insane game. That game is, like, 200 hours long, and it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Its story is incredible. So, but for this year, for actual role-playing, I gotta go Witcher. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, as you said, going back to, like, the whole karma system in James's Let's Play again, he, like, he kills people, but the only thing, like, the only, I guess, downside for him doing it is that his partner disappro- disagrees. Yeah. Like it says, Valentine was unhappy with that decision. It's like, but that's yeah. only that's only even some partners though. Yeah, mm-hmm. like the dog won't care if you kill everyone. It's yeah, like, <laughs> go ahead, kill whoever you want. It's like whatever. Dog like, hey. gonna be like, all, all right. I can yeah. have dinner tonight. Yeah, there was one point where he, where he killed the Brahmin and he killed everyone around it, and then Valentine turned on him and he just reverted to his quick save, and it was like, oh, okay, big downside it was for killing everyone there. Yeah. So, yeah, so I guess that's one thing I like about I guess not this not from this year, but Infamous. Infamous did that really well, like the whole karma system as well. Like you could be a real dickhead in that game. And like mm-hmm. pedestrians would start throwing fruit at you in the street. I thought that was really funny. But yeah. For my role playing game Witcher Three or Bloodborne. Bloodborne I've played as so probably Bloodborne. Undertale. He's Undertale. Fine. Yep. Yeah. Uh, okay, next up is best fighting game. We've got Mortal Kombat X, Rise of Incarnates, Guilty Gear, XRD, S, uh, S- Sign, and uh, Rising Thunder. I'm just going to say it, Mortal Kombat X. Uh, yeah, it's only it's only one that deserves to even be acknowledged, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's the only game I actually even watched gameplay of this, like, year, or last year. So, yeah, probably Mortal Kombat. So is this the first one that we're going to all agree on for the best for, of the category? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Mortal Kombat X it is. Uh, best family game. Uh, Disney Infinity 3.0, Lego Dimensions, Skylanders Superchargers, Splatoon, and Super Mario Maker. I've seen some rages from Super Mario Maker, and tell you what, that is not family friendly. Hey, all, I'm go- all I'm saying is Amiibos. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Amiibos. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going Super Every one Mario of those Maker. games. Look at Skylanders and Infinity. <laughs> They're both like their own ability to have Amiibos. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, right. yeah. I'm going. I'm going Mario Maker. I played it Wait. at my friend's place. Have you also it's noticed how they're all Wii U games? Yep, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> far out. It's the family. It's the family concert. Yeah, Mario Maker by far. Right. Yep. Yeah, Mario Maker for me as well. Oh there shit! Two in a row. Woo. Can uh, we make it three? No. No. You won't agree <laughs> on this one, Brady. <laughs> Best sports or racing game? Yes, sport. And racing oh, are the same category. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize this. All right then. Uh, uh, FIFA 16, NBA 2K16, FIFA Motorsport 6, PES 16, Rocket League, and Distance. I've said Rocket League, as I said before, excellent game. We all have a lot of fun with it, and I just really enjoy it as a multiplayer as well. Like as a group of friends coming together, it's awesome. Excellent game. Love it. Let's that's, put my, that's my racing slash sports game. Let's put it this way. How many hours have I put in Rocket League? I put 47 hours in Rocket League. 47 hours? NBA 2K, I put even over 100 hours. So therefore, NBA 2K wins for me. Okay. I'm going to say Distance. Distance. Mm-hmm. Because I love that game. That game is so much fun. And you can... And it's got, it's fully... Um, it's even... Even in it's like... Uh, 
Like, it's, it's constantly being updated for one, which is great. It's always good to see a developer still alive. Two, um, it has the Steam Workshop. People can make their own custom maps with their own custom assets. And so when you finish the tracks that the developers have done, you can literally just go onto the workshop and download whatever other ones. And people make the craziest maps. Like, I played Rainbow Road from Mario Kart. That shit was legit. Like, it's so good. <laughs> I've never but, seen this game before, and it looks really good. <laughs> yeah, ex- dude. Boys, hop on it. I'm telling you, it is what I. It was my favorite racing game of last year. Like, that looks really it was, good. It was really sick. Does it have multiplayer? Yep. Then that's our new game, boys. There you go. All right. So you go on dis- So everyone's gone different on this one. Mm-hmm. All righty. Yep. Next up is best multiplayer. We've got Rocket League, Splatoon, Halo Five Guardians, mm-hmm. Call of Duty Black Ops Three. Destiny the Taken King, and oh, I don't know if I want to include this one, but Brayden inclu- wanted me to include it. We've got League of Legends. League of Legends. League of Legends. <laughs> <sighs> I guess wait, I'm on my own. It's a new yeah. season. It, hey, it's wait, a but new season. When you think about it, it's a new season. It's basically like League of Legends 5. Yeah. Basically, because that's season 5. It's that's, from Okay, in all honesty, I've played since season 1. Season four to season five has been the biggest change ever. They changed the whole the whole map. They upgraded. They changed so many items. They made all new like. They got um, rid of so many the, items. They got rid of so many. Items. The dragon changed. The baron changed. They they changed. They the did game like so much. They did like fifteen reworks for characters. Like it, they did probably the most they've ever done. But like they they barely re- they didn't release a heap of champions this year. But they just did so much to the all-around game just to try and make it the best experience for everyone. Yeah. But only people raved about, but like, they they truly have. I I personally feel like it was it was 100% my get my best motor pair game of the year because I I have so many people I can play with. I enjoy yeah, playing it. So I I, enjoy I, it doing. I picked it up last year as my first year, and like, it's rage-inducing, but. Um. Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess I could say like Dota two then, because like. Hold on. Had a had a, you did not play Dota two. Had, had had a mic dysfunction, but huh? that's okay. You, do, go CSGO? go choose your Rocket League. We know you you want to choose Rocket League. But that's what you had the most fun playing. I could also say CS:GO. Well but then, yeah, do- I'll I'll say Rocket League. <laughs> I'll say Rocket League because I haven't played as much CS:GO this year, so I'll, I'll just say. Rocket League. I, I, I forget where I was up to before my mic died. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, first, 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 first season playing, and like sometimes it's really rage inducing, like tilted, tilted to the next century. But like it's been, it's been really fun, and it's really fun to play with friends, especially when you just do, do absolutely stupid shit. And me and Brad yeah, do, do stupid shit, so it's good. It's good fun. All right. Mm-hmm. Next is uh, best art direction. We've got the flame and the flood in the flood. Uh, Ori and the Blind Forest, Yoshi's Woolly World, and Metal Gear Solid. Five. Ori, 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 Ori. Flame and the Flood was beautiful. also pretty good, though. I'm gonna go Metal Gear. I think Metal it Gear? had a. I think it had a really. That Fox engine is, ma. It's beautiful. I think it was a really it's realistic mwah. setting for Ac- for Africa and um, the the first place they were at, like in Iraq or something. It was, and I thought it was just really realistic and like stylized perfectly for that environment I'm gonna give mine to Flame in the Flood that was that was a really surprising game I forget I haven't heard it oh, I haven't even seen that game you've never yeah, heard of it idea. look it up it's never honestly it. it was made by the developers Flame. of oh, blood. <sighs> who are the developers oh whoa um Okay, that's really neat. Yeah, that was my game we, of the year. Wait, it's really pretty. I is love this, it. Is this, is this the one where you go down the river and it gets harder? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, yes, yes, I've, that's it. I've this heard was the never Kickstarter spoken game. about this once to me. I've heard Dodger talk about this game before. It's honestly so pretty, and I love it. I, okay, that, this was this was my game for pretty prettiest game or best art direction. Why have to give it a go? Yep. Ori, Ori in the Blind Forest, also very good art direction, but Flame in the Flood, my my game. Yeah. Best art direction. Um, final category, and the big one we've all been waiting for. Drum roll, boys. It's uh, Game of the Year. Good. Uh, we got Stuff Witcher 3, Bloodborne, 
Fallout 4, Metal Gear Solid 5, and Super Mario Maker. I've gone Bloodborne. Fair enough. Yeah, Bloodborne. What about you? I've gone Fallout 4 because I have sunk so many hours into the vanilla and I have now begun my modding journey and I am now Kylo Ren cutting people down in my second playthrough. <laughs> oh, damn, dude. It's so good. <laughs> But yeah, that game is incredible. The scope of it, the voice acting, the music, music. Oh, the the fucking radio station is just incredible. And the, and how like, yeah, I I really love that game. That 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 is definitely my favorite game from last year. Hmm. Uh huh. Well, you ready for mine? Yep. It is that of L. You can't. No. Nah, come um, on. My, do it, do it, no. 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 I'm joking. Joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. Uh, no. It's actually none of them. My favorite game is Undertale. Undertale. Yeah, that is, that okay. is my game of the year. All right. Guarantee it. No, no, let, guarantee it. In this time next year, there will be at least ten coins of it that change it a little bit. That's going to be the new style of game that's going to come out soon. Like a heap of people are going to start making them. Just like and old that's eight, the style that eight gonna, bit or eight bit or like. Th- no, it's just that, like, the battle style and, like, how everything worked and everything changed mm-hmm. just by doing such little things. Yeah, Papyrus like, thought that... just changed to Papaya. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, th- th- there's there's just little things in that game that, like, make it so much different and bring back, like, little things that work so well. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I forgot to mention. I said before I couldn't think of who was the developers for it for Flame in the Flood. It was the art director of Bioshock, and they were and other people who worked on Halo, Guitar Hero, and Rock Band. Oh so wow! So I guess Guitar Hero and Rock Band were kind of the odd ones for me. But yeah, the two, Bioshock and Halo were like the main people. And do you not do you not look at the Rock Band when you're playing the guitar? Do you not see that crowd? Going wild, dude. I've played the new guitar here. It's fucking scary, man. There, <laughs> there, there are people fucking judging you. So if you play like shit, yeah. they're, just, oh, they're gonna boo the shit out of you, dude. That game, virtual reality, would scare the shit out. Of uh, that is one that... of the virtual reality games, I believe. Oh my oh. lord, that would be so. Yeah, it, could rock, you rock band VR you, is wait, one of them. Could you imagine? <laughs> you look down, you have like your guitar and everything, and then you're actually the person on stage, and you like shit yourself because you're looking out and playing in front of all these. People. That's that's what I mean. That's what and they're I mean. going crazy, and then soon you start like you know how you miss the notes and everything, and all of a sudden they just turn on you. Luckily, oh, they're they're a bit Lord. generous. Like it takes a, you to miss a lot of notes for them to yeah. start going like oh. They, 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 just that, you. they just give you that look where it's just like oh oh oh, and yeah. it's like. Oh, would, would it be funny if they started eyes. throwing? Would it be funny if they started throwing shit at you, and then you like try fruit. and dodge it, and you're like, "It's not gonna hit." Dude, that'd be that is actually the most scary VR experience I could ever imagine <laughs> in my entire life. <laughs> um, and- yeah. So, final final topic for this podcast is games we're excited for in the year of 2016. Should we just? Do you know, like- should we just run down them just real? Get the Get the birthday. Get the birthday. Get the birthday. All right. We, get got, we got Kingdom Hearts 3. Get the Mirror's Edge. <laughs> Street Catalyst. Fighter. Street Fighter. Oh, yeah, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Street Fighter yep. 5. Deus Ex. Uh, Mankind Divided. Mankind Divided. Doom. Dishonored Son- 2. Crackdown 3. Yeah. Uncharted 4. Legend of Zelda. XCOM 2. Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympic Overwatch, Games. Overwatch. Overwatch. Overwatch, Overwatch, Cyberpunk 2077, Overwatch. Unravel, fuck Unravel, and Tom Clancy's The Division. Hey, hey, hey. Alright, from, from this list, here's my top three. You ready? Mm-hmm. Overwatch. Mm-hmm. Um, the, wait, wait, why is my brain not finding it really quick? Deus Ex, Mankind Abided, mm-hmm. and Unravel. Okay. Mine, mine, mine. You, you said top three. That was more than three. That was three. That was three. I don't know. It was three. I stopped, I, I stopped counting you after. Count. I stopped counting after <laughs> one. one. Yeah, <laughs> that dyslexic counting. Um, my top three are Kingdom Hearts, Overwatch, and then Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon because it didn't come out in Australia until next month. For you some were meant to say Unravel. No, no, uh. I wanted this game <laughs> two months ago, and freaking America got it two months ago. Why? Because they're American. <laughs> Next question. Got it six months ago. 
Thanks, Donald. All right, next question. So my my top three that I'm most excited for would be Kingdom Hearts three. Uh, I'm who's, who's second? No, I'd say Uncharted four. <laughs> The story I've seen for that looks pretty good. And they've got some uh, choices now. So, like, you can choose one of four options. The Telltale effect. The butterfly effect with Telltale. Oh, um, God. And I want to say I'm excited for The Division, but I'm really not sure. I have watch, I have watch. I have watch, I have watch, I have watch. Mario and Sonic at the Rio Olympic Games. Fucking nerd. Fucking nerd. <laughs> I love that game. It's so good. Oh you don't even have um, a Nintendo. You don't even Nintendo, bro. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm also, I'm also excited for Horizon Zero Dawn. If I didn't, I didn't mention that, but Horizon Zero Dawn looks very good. Is that a space sim? Huh? No, no, no. It's made by the people Gorilla. Gorilla <gasps> Games. Oh, the one where you hunt robot dinosaurs? Yes. Fuck yeah. <laughs> also very excited for that. Um, Apparently it's open world. I thought it was going to be linear. Is. No, it's open world. That's terrifying. Um, yeah. So that's... They're my picks, I guess. <laughs> but also, if there's a new Star Wars game announced, cross your fingers that it's like going to be Star good. Like Star Wars 1313? <laughs> hey? Star Wars 1313? Cough, cough. Oh, dude, I wish. That's That look awesome. But, yeah, I think there's something... There's an open-world game being developed by Visceral yeah, Games at the Star moment. Wars. So fingers you, crossed you know, that there's a you, good one made. You know, you, you know what I'm looking forward to? Well... The real, uh, the, the 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 next Pokemon game was going to be X, or they're going to do a remake of Yellow, like actual remaster, like three D remaster. Yeah, boy. Yeah, yeah. I, I can I can agree with that. Like <laughs> that would be cool. I loved old school uh, old school Pokemon. I think everyone had a Game Boy back in the day. I didn't. Oh. I had a yeah. DS. That's come on, color. What's the color? Yeah. Your I put it in the bottom of the DS. Uh, oh, oh. oh, you had the old school DS that had the yeah. Game Boy as well. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. That's cool. That's oh, not, that. man, man. Oi, I had two colors, an event, and three SPs before I got my first DS. All right, rich boy. Brag Calm about down. it over here. Far out. I went through all my. I just, I just had my advance and I was happy with that. Man, oh, right. I, I went through I was happy I went with my wrong. Sega Mega Drive that is still next to me right now playing Street Fighter 2 when I was four years old. That's pretty <laughs> sick. That's pretty sick. I love old school consoles. Yeah. So is that. That is it. Up? We're wrapped up. We're all good. Uh, now we have to unravel. Before, before, hey, hey, hey. Before we wrap up, say one prediction for the year. Well, oh, one prediction for gaming? Yes. Um. I reckon Quantum Break will be a flop. Okay. I Jordy? think that Overwatch gets Game of the Year from everyone. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to say it's going to be Pokemon X Remake. Pokemon X Remake? Uh, oh, yeah. but the, the new one. Yeah, the third. Yeah. yeah. And James yeah, Wire. Do, mean, do you mean Zed? Zed, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I'm going to hope that 1313 is revived. Star Wars 1313. And that... Oh, I, no, was... I said one. Oh, I wait, said why one. Why do you get two? Hold on. Oh, you... okay, said, okay, no, come no, on. No, 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 no. You get one. Oh. You get one. I want to see the it? Darth Maul game finished. Shut up. You get one. <laughs> this is that's my one. I want to see the Darth. I want to see the Darth Maul game finished because there was a company that wanted to do it and they said no. So I hope Ukulele. EA can. What about Psychonauts it? Psychonauts two is a massive flop. <laughs> what you what is your prediction about ukulele? That oh, it'll be just be... like Banjo and Kazooie. The dream. <laughs> that is the dream. Alrighty. That's it for the, this month. The month of January. There are our awards. They've been given out. Thank you so much for listening. Braden, what's your closing statement? Goodbye. It's me. <laughs> okay. Jordy. Goodbye, my lover. Ooh, <laughs> Goodbye, my friend. <laughs> You have been the one. Don't give Tim Schafer money. <laughs> Goodbye, Goodbye to the people who hated on me. Goodbye to the people who love. Goodbye. Good, good, <laughs> goodbye, everybody.